This day 27 years ago, Nigerians trooped out to vote in what was regarded as the freest and fairest election ever held in the country. The faith and hopes of Nigerians were vested in one man, Chief Moshud Kashimau Olawali Abiola. Abiola, a Muslim businessman and philanthropist, ran for the presidency of Nigeria on the platform of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. He contested against Bashir Tofa of National Republican Convention, NRC. The 1993 Nigerian presidential elections were the outcome of a transitional process to civilian rule spearheaded by the military ruler, Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair, and peaceful. However, there was, in fact, a huge array of electoral practices virtually in all the states of the Federation before the actual voting began. Abiola presumably won the popular vote fair and square. However, the hopes of Nigerians was dashed when the election was annulled by General Babangida on the basis that the elections were corrupt. Abiola did his best to reclaim his mandate in a declaration at Epetedo. I was therefore convinced that the commitment to civilian rule come August 27, 1993 was firm, settled and irrevocable. I could not imagine that the purported transgressions of the, of the judiciary could possibly today. Nigerian polls crab as democracy is put on hold. Nigerian general voice vote blocking civilian rule. I will give you copies of all this. The International Observer Group says so. Next, itself says so. They know it and they said it. In his affidavit to the Court of Appeal in Kaduna, next said the results were already unknown. I won. He rallied support to claim the presidency, but he was arrested for treason by the military regime led by General Sonny Abacha and sent to prison for four years. Religious leaders, human rights activists, and citizens from across the globe called for his release. In June 1998, General Abacha was found dead under mysterious circumstances. One month later, on the day that Abiola was to be released from prison, he met with a U.S. delegation in Nigeria, which included Assistant Secretary Susan Rice and Under Secretary Thomas Pickering. The meeting was to discuss the country's planned transition to democratic rule. During the July 7th meeting, Abiola suddenly became ill, collapsed, and later died in a hospital. Some claimed he had been poisoned by members of the U.S. delegation after drinking tea during the meeting. There were also claims that he had been beaten to death. Some activists shared their June 12, 1993 experience. As socialists, we don't queue behind those who try to create the false impression and illusion that the June 12th election you know, was the best and freest of all, all of that. Of course, within the context of the struggle against military dictatorship, uh, we must not forget that as socialists, we boycotted the elections. A majority of Nigerians also didn't vote in that election, but it was significant that 14 million Nigerians voted and placed place, place in the result you know, of that election side by side with a continuation of military dictatorship, uh, the voice of 40 million was far greater, you know, than the jackboots and guns of the Babangida uh, regime. So it is within this context that the June 12th, you know, plays an important epochal role in the struggle of the mass of the working people against military dictatorship. Following the subsequent annulment of the election you know, by, by, by the Babangida regime as, 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 as a clear documentation of, of the willingness of the working masses 
in this part of the world to resist military dictatorship. And, and indeed, the Babangida regime was chased out of power you know, on the 26th uh, of August uh, 1993. Of course, he, he offered history the free stepping aside. In reality, it was a series of struggle of the mass of the working people on the streets, the streets of general strikes, you know, that compelled and forced the regime with no other choice than to, than to step up. In 1993, I was a journalist with the Guardian newspapers, and my responsibility was to cover the military, to also cover politics in 1993. Now, let me say that 1993 uh, was a rallying point of progressive elements, Reactionary elements, uh, students' movements, labor, with a common goal to end military rule. Because as of 1987, we need to understand the background. As of 1987, the cop of Babangida was full. He had committed so many atrocities. There was the killing of Delegiwa, which up to now nobody has been able to explain in November 1986. There was also the, the killing of his best, you know, uh, one of his best friends, Major General Vatsa, that were alleged to have planned it. Ten officers, fine officers were shot dead, in spite of global outrage that they should not be killed. Then we also had a lot of repression, the Okoba killing, you know, Seven people from the same family, the same father and mother, were wiped off you know, by policemen. There was also the clean of the Daudu brothers, which took place in Oshodi. There was the clean of four students at Amandu Belo University in 1986. The policemen went into their hostels, brutalized them, raped them, and then four students were killed. And then there was a very terrible incident, which happened, I think, in September 1992, where 168 military officers perished. The plane took off at, in Lagos here, and three minutes after, you know, it perished. And I remember I was in the Guardian, that when Babangida and Ahomu were going there to inspect the record, they were laughing. We took the picture at that time and put it on the front page of the Guardian. They were laughing. Those, the, those soldiers were left in that plane for several hours. They bled to death. And up till now, nobody has made any attempt to probe that Ejibo, you know, plane crash. You know, so there were so many things that happened under Babangida's regime that people felt, look, enough is enough. So I was actually on exile, as I would say, and uh, I was in the University of Lagos, uh, then with uh, Shawara and other people. So it was at that point that uh, the result of uh, the annulments met us. So we immediately, as student leaders, gathered together, you know, to resist the uh, annulment result and we started mobilizing people. And I could remember quite well that um, uh, during one of the days, uh, we hijacked uh, one of the uh, trailers that was um, uh, that was on the road and were on that trailer, using that trailer to mobilize uh, people. As students leaders, we were quite um, vocal and uh, we were part of the uh, UAD, we were part of the uh, Campaign for Democracy, uh, who were part of the people mobilizing and also ensuring that uh, because then it was years of reflectarian. It was years where you have to take a lot of risk. I remember that at a point in time uh, I was asked to go to Benin to, to uh, distribute leaflet to paste posters and all of that. So we participated a lot in that in mobilizing people who were holding press conferences who were also mobilizing young people and telling them about the need for all of us to stand against the uh, repression that was about to happen. Over the years, Nigerians across the divide have called for the recognition of MK Wabiola as a former president and for June 12 to be admitted as Democracy Day. Only states in southwestern Nigeria have upheld this till date. On June 6, 2018, President Muhammadu Buhari change Nigeria's Democracy Day to June 12 and award the GCFR posthumously to Chief M.K. Wabiola. As part of the process of healing and reconciliation, I approve the recognition of June 12 as Democracy Day and invest the late Chief Abiola and Babagana Kingibe 
with national honors, as I did with late Chief Ghani Ferrahemi. The purpose was to partially atone for the previous damage done in annulling the presidential elections of that year. Today, I propose the renaming of the Abuja National Stadium henceforth. It will be called Mashud Abiola National Stadium. Today marks 27 years of a dashed hope that shook Nigeria. Although it's been 27 years, Nigerians still remember it like yesterday. The pronouncement of June 12th as a democracy day, you know, could only not, could, could only not, could only directly have been connected to the attempt by the Buhari regime to chunk up its level, you know, at the coming of the uh, general elections uh, last year, you know, as a basis to gain populist sentiment in this part of the country. We must recognize that the import of a democracy day actually do not lie in the making of a holiday like we have it today. All of the holidays that we have had in the past period, how, how has this made any significant difference you know, in the life of what of the mass of the, of, of the working people? The, the millions of people, 40 million people that came out to vote in June 12th, they voted with clear demands in their, in, in their mind. And what were those demands? They wanted a change in their social economic conditions. They didn't just vote for an end of military rule. They voted for a, a, a type of democracy that will mean a basis of beginning to transform in their lives. The former president, Jonathan, and uh, Buhari, they share, if you, if you find them sharing uh, a program together, then there should be suspicion. Remember that Jonathan actually wanted to name the uh, University of Lagos after Abiola. So then suddenly, Buhari came to and said, you know, June 12th holiday. So it's like people have been looking for a way to feast on June 12th to score sheer political points. I don't, I don't think there can be genuine reconciliation until we find out and punish those that are responsible for the death of Abiola. Those that were responsible for the death of his wife, Kudira Abiola. Those who are arrested for the death of Tunde Oladepo, who was shot, a journalist of The Guardian, who was shot in Abeokuta. Those that were responsible for missing journalists like Chine Duofaru of The Guardian newspaper who disappeared and often now nobody could trace him. So you cannot be talking about peace when there's no justice. So I think people are just trying to score political points. People want to win over the Southwest. So I don't think this idea of June 12th holiday is born out of genuine interest for the, for the masses. Because if they're actually interested in the people, it's not about Abiola, it's about restitution, it's about justice, it's about liberty. But we have a lot of cases of injustice that are yet to be redressed by successive regi uh, regimes since 1999. Chief MK Abiola described as the best president Nigeria never had. The big question is, would Nigerian fortune have changed if he had been president? As speculative as that will be, uh, uh, we do not share any illusion in the fact that the MQ Abiola regime itself will have based itself on a new capitalist economy. But it is significant for all of us to note that or pose the question, why did the Babangida regime annul that election? The election was annulled, not from the point of view that they hated Abiola. It was clearly from the class position that the regime was not confident enough that all of the populist illusion that the OP93 campaign had sold in the mass of the working people, and that when huge movement break out among the Nigerian working masses to demand for these fruits of democracy, that those pressures would not be enough to force the, the Abiola regime, you know, to, to, to move from a right-wing shift, you know, either to a reformist uh, 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 wing, you know, to granting some of all of these expectations of the, of the mass of the people. And not granted, the regime was also clearly also mortally afraid of the fact that a mass movement will arise, uh, a mass movement will arise with, a Buari, uh, with an Abiola regime in power and that it might not be capable of holding the shoulders of the ruling elites collectively together. This for me are, are greater reasons and greater fears of the regime while the election was uh, annulled. I had no illusion 
that June 12 will have resolved the Iran contradictions. Because we have to be very honest with ourselves. We knew Abiola, if at any time there were, there were riots in Lagos by Nans, they used to attack ITT, owned by Abiola. He was generally perceived as a friend of the, of the military, as a, you know, as, a, as, an, as an imperialist, you know. So, um, you know, that was the kind of garbage he had on his back until June 12 came in. But I think June 12 redeemed him because he stood with the people until his last days. If June 12 had been revalidated, we would have moved slowly forward, but definitely it would not have been a movement backward. I don't think the general contradictions will have been you know, resolved because the ruling class, you know, what actually will be the beneficiary of June 12, the main beneficiaries, you know, but we will have had democracy since 1993. So, know how, know how we will have made a lot of progress than the progress that we have made now.